Why are all the talented upcoming producers, songwriters, and artists, even executives, talking about the Billboard 500 Club? The Billboard 500 Club is just what I needed. As a graduate of Berklee College of Music, for the last three years, I've learned more and grown more as a musician and a producer and an artist in three months than I had in the last three years. getting feedback from the people in the industry. So they're saying, here's why I wouldn't pick this song for the radio. Here's why I wouldn't pick this song for a movie or a TV show placement. So you can hear what you need to do to get better. It's helped me focus and change my mindset of what it is to be an artist. The Billboard 500 Club is amazing and it's been for me, a total game changer. It's like having a, a jigsaw puzzle and some of the pieces where they've been lost and then it, someone comes along and gives you the jigsaw pieces. Slot it in, you see the big picture and you can, you can run with it then. If any of you can take any sort of course that he offers, I would do it in a heartbeat. It will be some of the best invested money. Just nine months after joining the club, I got my first contracts with a sync licensing company in Los Angeles, and that company is now pitching my songs for TV and film. Good, cool. So uh, let's get into money motivation. Uh, real quick, who here on today's call has already gotten the Unity release information? Raise your hands. All right. I think John Mark has as well. I see that he's here. Um, if you haven't received the Unity information yet, uh, I'm excited for when you do, because I've been able to see the reactions that each person is going through once they receive the information. And I can tell you that every single person has had some sort of profound moment. For the people who have received it, I see you shaking your heads up and down, <laughs> um, which is good. So I'm going to tell you something really interesting that happened. Uh, I posted some clips in the group of uh, the experiences some people were having. Some people are talking for like an hour after they hear the information from the Unity release. So it's sparking almost like an awakeness in, in a very interesting way, which I didn't expect. Because like I said, I was kind of in a dream state when these words started coming out. And I've gotten really used to understanding when I'm channeling uh, and trying to then be active about it because I realize that sometimes you got so many things going on in your life, but there is a an essence and a purity and an energy that is sometimes trying to come out, but you're being bombarded by a thousand things. So I really try to be more mindful of that. And then when I feel that connection now I'm recording it. And the things that have happened in this recording sessions, uh, Amy started to transcribe because it's very impactful information. Um, and it's something that I feel like the world needs to hear. So she's been transcribing these things. And one of the things that came out the other day was the one about the Unity release. When I'm in this channeling mode, it's, it's not only about, it's not about music, it's about all different kinds of things. But that one was about the Unity release. So I took this information and I took some of the video clips and I showed them to one of the investors I'm working with. And I just said, hey, I just want you to see, and this person's way more than an investor. So when I say that word, that, that word to me in this case even doesn't magnify uh, this person in my life and what we're, what we're talking about, what we're building. Um, but when I showed them some of the clips, the one that I posted actually on in the group of what's starting to happen when people are hearing this information, it just rejuvenated both of us because we went this is only like the first 10 people who've heard this like it's not even through the whole group yet we haven't focused all of our energy into recording the music yet the rest of the millions of musicians in the world haven't heard this yet 
And if it's already starting in these first 10 like this, what we're doing is going to change the world. And I, I don't say that lightly. I'm saying that what we're doing is going to change the world. If anyone else has heard it yet, do you agree now that you know? Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. That's all I'll say. If you haven't received the information yet, I'm excited for you because then you'll have that moment that that I had, that Amy had, that Andre had, Yudi had, John Mark had. I saw the one with the Alanda and Cobra today, like almost got into tears because I saw Cobra kind of sit back in his chair and he was just like, you're right, it's all that, it's all energy. Everything he just, like, it was to see that reaction. And then Ahmed's, Ahmed's when he was like, he just, that was six pages or six, six minutes of something that I've been feeling my life and putting it all together. And so I'm just, I'm looking forward for when everyone has that experience because it is going to change the way you look at music. It's going to change the way you look at energy. And I'm letting you know, this is just the opening to the door, but by far, we still have lots to go down the tunnel, but this is the opening, which I wish someone would have said to me 20 years ago. I, I wish some, someone 20 years ago that I respected looked me in the eye and was like, hey, you got a gift here, what you're doing. This thing that you're learning how to conjure, it's way more powerful than you think. And unfortunately, there's an industry that I felt at the time, there's an industry that you think is the barrier. That's the obstacle. That's the, the big moment. And that is so small on the scale of what a unified group of musicians can actually do. I wish someone would have told me that 20 years ago because I would have entered every session differently. And now what's funny is that when I watch videos of like Rick Rubin, it all makes sense. Watch videos of Rick Rubin and Pharrell talk about energy. And then it all started to make sense. It was like, oh, oh, they were, they were onto something, but not completely all the way there yet, but connecting it. Um, so it was really cool. It was really cool. Also, interesting thing about energy. So I started to research. I was like, does energy from sound turn into light? It does. It's called sonoluminescent, I think, where vibrations from sound can turn into light, which means the vibrations that we're creating musically actually turn into a visual stimulization and can turn into something way past just what we're doing. I had an experience recently, and it's part of the thing that I'm going to tell everyone, if you get a chance, once you get to level 4.5, I'm going to invite you out here to Costa Rica. You're going to have free studio time. You're going to work with me in the studio. I'm going to show you some of these things. But I, I recently had experience where I had uh, synesthesia while listening to music. I could taste the notes. Never experienced that in my whole entire life. Never in my whole entire life. I didn't even know that. Like I've had synesthesia to where if someone played a song and maybe I was like a little stoned, I, I'd be like, oh, I can kind of see different colors. And this is way past colors. This was, I can tell you this. I now hear notes that are not in the scale. Didn't even know that was possible. Like I can hit notes that are not in the piano scale. So what's happened recently, and I'm only gonna show it to the people once you get to level 4.5, because this is the kind of thing that I actually think could change the world. We've been designed to learn scales based on the tunings that have been programmed in us. So for you to go from D to C, someone told you that was correct. Another human being said, that's correct. What if there's 20 notes in between D to C? You just never knew it. When I hear music now, I hear things in between notes that I never heard my whole entire life, like ever. So after this experience, I was able to see the colors, everything was in colors, but the craziest thing was the taste. I was able to taste the music. That to me is the game changer of all ways of, of uh, putting music out into the world is to experience it under that lens. Because then what you're putting out truly is like a part of galactic energy. Now, I'm not saying every pop song is going to have that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm saying the awareness to know that it's possible is more important.
the awareness to go through that experience and go, oh my God, this is how far my brain and my body, my senses can experience in music. And this other thing was like more linear, how we were taught, like this note and that scale and that, that's how we have been taught. But you mean over here, there's all different colors. There's colors in the rainbow I didn't even know existed. That was kind of where I, I was at the other day. Not kind of, that's exactly where I was at. Um, it's just hard to explain it. It's really hard to explain it because I've never experienced something like that in my life either. Uh, and it wasn't just me, Amy did as well. So it's something that can be repeatable. And it wasn't just us, it was other people who were there as well. So like I'm saying, like it wasn't just us. This stuff is repeatable, um, which is why I get so excited about it. Because if people can experience this and then record music here in Costa Rica, that's, that's transcending for everyone. The artist, the person listening to it, uh, it that kind of vibration is, is what I believe will change the world. I truly believe that we are in history right now because, and, and we're all together in this kind of organization. Remember, as, as simple as it sounds, there's never been a place like this. There's never been a group of people from all around the world who get together on the internet, who learn from the top executives in the world. The top executives give opportunities for it. You don't have to spend $75,000 a year. And more importantly, we're talking about how do we actually change consciousness in the music because we're aware of our power. That doesn't exist. All right. I, I wish it did, but it doesn't. And we are becoming the change in the world that we want to see. Some people are going to get it. They're going to they're gonna see it. They're going to go, oh my God, in five years, when we're at the top level of the music industry, when we all know how to write hit songs, when we all know the power, when we all can record from home, when our unit has more trust with each other, we've done projects with one another, we've all seen each other grow. So now we have this weird, cool bond, like it's almost like extended family all around the world. And we're conscious about what we're putting into the world. That's never happened before in history. But I think it's supposed to. If you look at what's going on in the world right now, there's a lot of noise. It's a lot of static vibration noise that's just, ugh, almost like a headache. I'll be honest, I went to uh, San Jose this last week. I, I think I told everyone, but it was the first time in 20 years I went to the doctor. <laughs> first time in 20 years I went to the dentist. So uh, that was an experience. The guy, the dentist was like, um, he said, uh, he, he said, oh, how long? Now also, my Spanish, no, un poquito. So everyone's talking in Spanish and I'm just kind of just going, mm-hmm, see, sí, see, sí, see, sí, see, sí, you know, just trying to, to work it out. And uh, the, <laughs> the guy said, so how long, you know, how long, you know, cuantos años have you been to the dentist? And I was like, uh, 20? And he's like, 20? He like looked at me and it was like 20 years. And I was like, yeah, 20 years. And so he looks at my mouth and he's like, oh, we have to, we have to clean this before we can even tell you if you have cavities or not. We, we, we don't know. So he's like going to town. Like I've never even heard instruments like this. It's like, ee, ee, and just like, so he gets done and he's doing his little thing and they're looking for cavities. And he's like, you don't have any cavities. I was like, I don't know. He's like, you don't eat sugar, do you? I was like, I eat a candy bar like every night. He's like, what? And so he says, you must have good saliva. He says, he's only seen four other people in all of his years have this be like this where their a saliva is, is balancing their mouth. And I said, oh, wow, that's amazing. So anyway, long story short, I had to go to San Jose. Uh, oh, and that being said, Amy wasn't as happy because <laughs> she had cavities. So <laughs> when I came out, Amy's like, wait a second, you eat candy, you eat sugar, you do this, you, you don't floss every day. And she was like, but I have the cavity. It's like, I don't know, I don't know I'll tell you. Um, but, but here's the thing. We drove into San Jose, which is the capital. And, um, more importantly, when we enter the city, I was able for the first time to feel the change of energetic vibration. It was the first time where I was able to feel it because I've been so disconnected from it for about a year now. And you're looking at people in their cars and they're honking their horns and they're angry and they're aggressive and they're trying to go somewhere, but they don't even know where they need to go, but they have to get there faster than everyone else to get to some place they don't even want to be at. It's weird. It's like a very weird thing. So I'm sitting down talking with our lawyer and, 
I said to him, isn't it interesting? In America, we have this thought of working nine to five. You know, that's the thought. Like, you're going to work from nine this hour to five this hour. And that will con be conducive for a good day of work. Now, that theory might have made sense when you were taking a hammer and hitting a nail every day. But we have the internet now. We can do more work in an hour than we could in 10 in the past. So how come the hours haven't changed and the money hasn't gone up? Doesn't make sense. In anything, if you can do a job 10 times faster, why would you not work less then? Unless capitalism is greed is so ingrained in you that you're like, no, we can do more, so we gotta do more, right? So I asked him, I said, why haven't they changed the, why, I said, why do you think they haven't changed it from nine to five to like maybe 10 to four, considering that we can do more now? We have AI, we have, we have assistants, we have robots, we have people who are actually educated now. Before, there'd be someone telling everyone what to do. Now people are educated. And this is what his answer was, which was so interesting. He goes, well, Adam, here, it's 7.30 to four. I said, that's more. You're actually working more. The thing is, when I said it, he didn't realize it until I said it. And that, th there was that moment where he kind of went like this. I said, yeah, like nine to five is in America. You said 7.30 to four. So that's more hours you're working. And I said, and that means you have to get up at six to get ready for the job because you're stuck in traffic, which means you're also stuck on traffic on the way back. So you don't get home till about six. So you're actually working more, bro. His face had so many micro expressions popping off. He didn't even answer me because of it. And then his, the one thing he said, and this is where it gets trippy. The one thing he said was, and that's always funny whenever I watch how people start sentences. If they say, yeah, but it's a way of saying, I acknowledge what you're saying, but here I'm going to tell you something that makes it worth validity. So just pay attention to how people word things. Yeah, but, and they usually fly past it really fast. Yeah, but, da, 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 you know. And his answer was, yeah, but they give us coffee and breakfast. That was his answer. Yeah, but they give us coffee and breakfast. And I didn't say a word, I just looked at him. I literally, he was like, this is how it went. I said, that means you're working more and traffic here is horrible. I've been stuck in traffic in the city now. It's, it's horrendous. It's like the 405 in Los Angeles. So you're waking up at six, you're getting home at six. And I said, you're probably only seeing your kids. You had two kids. I was like, you're probably only seeing your kids for dinner. And then you go to bed and you do it again. So you're actually devoting more of your time to this thing than to your family, which what's probably gonna happen, happen is your family is gonna be all disruptive because you're spending more time garnering this thing than that thing. And that's kind of how I opened it up. And then he said, yeah, but they give us coffee and breakfast. And then I went, Mm -hmm. And there was just that moment. And he just did like a, like a look around. So it's interesting how thoughts from other people can control your whole entire view of how life is going and in what direction it's going. Like, is it going good? Is it going bad? Is it, am I on the right path? Am I good? Is it bad? And if you ask like any real philosopher, they'll say the, 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 the purpose of life is to live. That's the purpose. But unfortunately, we're getting given all these little boxes of how to live. And no one looks at nature, which is the easiest way to do it. Like look at something that's been around for millions of years and didn't need our help to stay around. Nature, it's already there. The, the whole blueprint is already there. But Humans love to mess with blueprints because they think they can make things better. Even though we're still figuring out all these things within the architecture and then we're naming them and we're acting like we're special. We're like, this is a trihorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohorohoroh
that we're amassing a group of people who are now consciously aware of what can happen when they sing in this thing. I mean, that's, that's like a, it's a very interesting thing when you think about that, because I was just at my friend's house uh, and his daughter is 12. I gave her, she sings in town. She sings at the local um, open mics nights and stuff. And so I gave them the Seth Riggs warm-up CDs that we all have. And uh, so she's been practicing them. And one of her favorite movies is the movie Leap. So when she found out, I wrote a song on the soundtrack. She's like, oh my God, the guy who wrote on the soundtrack I watched. It was like that cool experience. Um, but I was explaining to him, I said, you know, uh, if you're a 12 year old girl, I would just be scared to go on the internet. There's crazy people out there nowadays. Like it's, it's nuts. And um, she was saying the other night, this is, this is what I'm telling you, it's scary. The, her daughter, the 12 year old and a bunch of friends were in the room and her mom, who's my friend was walking by and heard a man's voice going like, what are you girls doing? And so like, she went to the door and like listened in and it sounded like, a, like an older man, like 45, 50, like, so what are you girls doing? And the girls are like all giggling and stuff. And so the mom opens the door and is like, who are you guys talking to? And they like shut the computer. Oh, no one, blah, blah, blah. And it turns out they were on a site called Omegle. If anyone's seen those videos on Omegle, right? Which is super creepy. There's a lot of creepers on this place, right? And they're just like a lot of pedophiles, a lot of people trying to, to lure young girls in, young boys too. It's crazy. So anyway, we were talking about music and um, I was listening to some of the music that these kids listen to. And similar to what Andre said, they're listening to like WAP and Cardi B and da da da, like a lot of a lot of things. If you look at the lyrical content, if you look at the the the, the programming that's going from this person into another person, and more importantly, it's going not from this person to one other person. It's from this person to millions of people. That's the scary part. Millions of people who don't really know what they're doing in life yet. Another scary part. Um, and who are looking for direction. Another scary. So uh, I said, well, here's what's happening. And I don't think everyone's connected yet. When you live in a major city, like I have, I've lived in LA, I've lived in Miami, I've lived in New York, I've lived in Austin. So I've lived in four of the major cities in America. And I always thought it was normal because I, I was raised in cities. So I just thought, yeah, this, you know, this is the energy. This is the energy you need. It's, a, it's what makes it tough. It's, a, it's all those things, right? Um, but here's what's interesting is that when artists are going into the studio, a lot of times is we're doing this one thing. We're all doing it. We are releasing our energy into this thing, the microphone. It's a release. People even say it. They're going to see you and say, yeah, man, the studio is my release. That's, that's my place. That's where I get everything out. Okay. Well, imagine if you took a ball of energy and you inputted shock, adrenaline, freaking traumas, dramas, um, constructs that don't even make sense, self-doubt, um, depression. You, you do all this stuff, right? And then you squeeze it into a mic. Well, who, who are the people who are going to listen to it? What do you think they're going to absorb? All of this. Being squeezed right into that thing. And it's going to go out. Now, it's not going to go out to just one person. It's going to go out to millions in some cases. Some people will go through a phase where they're like, oh, I listened to blah, blah, blah back in the day, but uh, I don't know, I don't listen to it anymore. Some people are gonna get stuck in the loop and that's gonna become their identity. Part of the reason why I wanna take artists out of that energy is because what if they came out to a place like this and they didn't have those same constructs. They didn't feel that depressed because they're getting all the vitamins, they're getting the joy without having to to uh, sell themselves for it. They're getting beauty in everything they see. If they're getting all that and that's being put into this ball of energy and then that's squeezed into the microphone and that goes out to millions, I believe we can change the world. I believe it's that simple of a concept. Now, other things might have to come into to support it, but that is the simplicity of the concept. Does that all make sense, everyone? Yeah? Okay. So I feel like we are that group to do it. And it's the reason why I said to everyone, I always like it when people become leaders, because then you will lead your version of how this thing affects others. If musicians as a whole, if Berkeley taught this, 
if musicologists taught this, our world would be different. If other musicians taught other musicians this stuff, our world would be different. But what happens is we get so wrapped up in, in attention, the, the need for attention, not the need for connection, which is different. Because people say this all the time. Why do you do music? Oh, it's to connect with others. They literally said it all the time and they'll play me a song. And I'm like, drop it on the floor, girl. I'm like, how is that connecting to, I'm so confused. I just want to connect with others. So I open this theory up to everyone is that you more than likely the reason why you have a calling towards music, the reason why you have a pull towards it is because it's needed in the world right now. It's almost like the planet knows it needs it. Because let me be very clear, the planet is reacting right now to everything we've been putting into it. That's why we're experiencing all this stuff in the world. The planet is just as alive as we are. We just kind of look at the planet like it's, oh, it's just something like some birds and it's just like some trees and it's just like some oceans. Because for some reason, people have been sold the idea that we're better than it, which is wacky. Like that we're above other things on the planet. And that's why we kill other things on the planet. That's why we destroy it because we believe we're better. If we believed that we needed it, we wouldn't be destroying the Amazon rainforest. It'd be that simple. We'd be like, we need that thing. It creates a lot of oxygen. There's scientific studies that prove this. But then someone else with money is like, shut up. We don't need it. Let's all break it down. Other people are like, yeah, let's go with the person with money. And that person with money is going to die in 80 years. And then we're not going to have rest for our families. Like it doesn't make any sense. But until people start to question and think about it and go, but why are we doing that? It was, it's been here doing what it's supposed to be doing for millions of years. Why are we messing with these things? If the answer is money, I'm letting you know that greed is the downfall of humankind. It really is. The, the need for something that you don't need is weird. No other animal has that that hack in its brain. There is no squirrel that's like, I need more nuts than all the other squirrels. There's no gorilla that's like, I need more bananas than you because that makes me a better, there, there's nothing on this planet other than humans that has a need for things they don't need. And I feel like the more musicians who at least understand that, you don't have to work, walk a perfect path. I don't think anyone's going to. But awareness of where you're walking is something different. Like, I don't expect everyone to work a straight and narrow because I don't. But at the same time, I know if I go too far over there, not a good idea. So I'm not going to walk that far. I'm going to stay right around here. Um, so anyway, long story short, we were, I was in this uh, meeting. Uh, it's called the One Degree Network, which uh, I was really thankful that Craig invited me to a bunch of these entrepreneurs. They invited me into this, this group. Um, and... There's like a hundred entrepreneurs from all around the world on these calls. And this one guy who is, they're called futurists, which is something that I do all the time. I just didn't know there's a name for it. And he's part of a group of futurists who talk about what's happening in the world and where it's going. And they have, they're extremely intelligent human beings with graphs and diagrams and like scientists. And this is what's going to happen unless we all start to consciously understand the, the global scope. And so he has a project called the Fork in the Road Project. And anyway, there's like 100 of these entrepreneurs on this call, and they break us up into these little groups, which we're going to do in a second. And um, he, they just said, hey, does anyone have ideas to help the Fork in the Road Project? And my idea was, well, I would love for you to come into our group, explain to everyone what's happening, that we actually have to create a fork in the road. Because if we keep doing this consumerism nonsense and this greed and this weird robot looking people, if we keep doing this, we're all going to self-sabotage this planet. Like it's happening. It's already happening, but it's going to happen at a much faster rate. Remember the technological age in 40 years ago, we were playing Atari with two little ping pong things. Beep, beep, beep. That was 40 years ago. Now we're in virtual reality world where everything feels real. It's only going to keep increasing. It's only going to keep on getting more and more submersive into another reality, which people are going to forget that they're actually living on a planet. That's not an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem. What we're putting out is going to come back in. So I asked him if he'd come in and speak in the group. And he said he would love to. And I also said, wouldn't it be cool if we raised money for an artist project? So let's say artists go online, they post something that they're going to do, whatever it is, that's a fork in the road, which is like, I, from now on, I'm choosing to do this 
because I feel like it's going to be better for the world or better for myself or whatever, but it's changing the thought pattern and they'll hashtag fork in the road project. And um, from that, they'll have someone from their team scan all the people who do it. And the person with the best idea and the best song will get money towards their next release, like uh, a sizable amount. I'm not saying it's huge, but it might be $5,000 and everyone agreed. So this is a project that we're going to be doing where um, he's going to come in and talk about it. We haven't figured all the logistics out, but on the call, so we have all these entrepreneurs in the Zoom call, pretty much how you are in the call right now for Build a 500 Club. And everyone's in it. And I bring this up and people, people on the call were like, I'll drop money into that. I'll drop money into that. I'll drop money into that. So it was really cool to see people who are awake and who have uh, financial uh, ability to say, that's something positive because they believe artists are the change in the world. They, they, we've talked about it so openly. People are like, I think artists are leading the way. They have to lead the way because they have more influence than the father. They have more influence than the mother. They have more influence than, than the model who's on the Levi's commercial. They have more influence than the reality show person. Like they, artists at the top have way more influence than Snooki. So all I'm saying is, uh, to open up this awareness because some of the people who I'm going to bring in the group coming up are extremely high level entrepreneurs who are all making a conscious decision to look at the trickle down effect way more now than just the, the big idea. And here's the reason why. And it's interesting that people haven't put this together yet. Cause I said this to a friend the other day, the number one thing that Silicon Valley does when they come up with an idea is say, is this disruptive to the marketplace? Has anybody heard that before? Have you heard disruptive? Okay, so they say, is this disruptive? Okay, it's great in theory, but if something disruptive, that means you're going to break something else. Back in the day, if someone had an idea, it didn't go around the world in a day. You had the idea, you saw if it worked in your little town, it got filtered, it became a better idea. You did it at a state level, it got filtered, it became a better idea. Then you moved to Tri-County, it got a better idea. Then maybe you tried going through America and then possibly the world. Now someone in Silicon Valley with just a round table of five other people who really want a lot of money can say, this is gonna be disruptive, let's put it out tomorrow. But when you break something, who's going to clean it up? No one talks about that. They just wanna break things, but no one's talking about who's gonna clean up the parts that they break. So if you see all these people in the world right now who are broken from over stimulization from the, uh, the ability for, you know, all these social media sites to market to you when you're depressed, they know all this stuff. When you're not feeling good, they're tracking your eyes, they're tracking your fingers, they know what you're typing in Google. They're all conforming together to sell you a bunch of products. We didn't say, well, who's gonna pick up the broken people? That wasn't put into their business plan because they're just about being disruptive for money, not disruptive for a better change. These are two completely different concepts and completely different ways of uh, trains of thought. Does this all make sense? Okay. So anyway, I truly believe that everyone who's in our group, we are together for a reason because no one else is doing it. All right. So, which is still shocking to me, but if you feel that call inside, like this stuff, on, no one's really talking about this. It's almost like it's behind the curtain maybe being behind the curtain is better than being in front of the store trying to buy things that are just gonna put you in a loop. What if we can be the ones that create the actual change that does become part of the way we help save this planet? That's a very big goal. But do I think it's impossible? Absolutely not. I think it's something that has to happen. I feel like it has to happen. Does anyone agree with me on this? Like, like it's gotta happen? Okay. So anyway, that was the first part of today of, um, of the Build 500 Club Money Motivation. It was just opening that train of thought because when I went to the city the other day and I heard the honking noise of the horns, it was like, ah, and then I heard the people yelling. I got stuck on one part of the road. And so I, I had to back out. And one person behind me was like, come on, man, come on. I'm like, dude, I'm stuck. I have to back out. It almost like he wanted to fight me because I made the wrong turn. That quick of a trigger is not how humans are supposed to be. Like if you look at all their animals, they play. They only fight when it's like, we're fighting for, you know, 
procreation. There's a, that's the last person we can mate with. We're going to fight. Or this is territory. Everything else is play. Everything. Everything else is play. But somehow in our world, now we're like, it's got to be like this. And, 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 and I'm the best. I'm the boss. I'm the king. I'm the queen. I'm the blah, blah, blah. It's getting to be at such levels that we're forgetting part of this life is just living. It's just playing. It's just loving. It's just being at vibration. It's about finding harm. If that's what everything else is doing when it doesn't come down to territory and procreation. Why are we doing it about everything? It's crazy. So anyway, still want to start that off. Um, next part, we're going to break into some rooms right now. So what I want us to do is when we break into rooms, I want you to find, let's say, one construct. So one construct that you feel should change in the world. Just one. Okay. And we're just going to talk about them in our groups. We're going to spend about 10 minutes and we'll come up with the constructs. So say I've been a group with, um, with John and, and Andre and Yudi. Mine might be uh, race. Let's say that's a construct. Because it's not real. When you, everyone dies, we all look like skeletons. They don't know what race you are when you die. So it's just the color of your pigment of your skin is what they're going to see on the outside. But I think race is a dumb idea because it's just based on where you were born. It has nothing to do with anything else more than that. So that to me is a construct that I feel is, is kind of silly. Um, so we'll take 15 minutes and we'll all have different constructs. Try to make them different. So if you hear someone else says one, if you can try and make another one. And I think what's going to be really important for us is that us as musicians, as we start to remove these constructs, that really don't serve us at all. When we do our music, it'll come from a place that's not so clunky, not so, it's almost like if you think of like a, a, a faucet and the water can't come out because inside of it, there's a bunch of gook. And then you gotta put some Drano in there and you clean it out. And then next thing you know, the water comes out, it's nice and clean. I think we have to get back to getting that mindset, that filtration system mindset. Um, so anyway, we're gonna break into groups and then just talk about some contracts for 10, 15 minutes on the clock. And uh, you'll bring it up. We'll talk about it for maybe two minutes and then next person goes, next person goes. Cool. Why are all the talented upcoming producers, songwriters and artists, even executives talking about the Billboard 500 Club? The Billboard 500 Club is just what I needed. As a graduate of Berkeley College of Music, for the last three years, I've learned more and grown more as a musician and a producer and an artist in three months than I had in the last three years. feedback from the people in the industry. So they're saying, here's why I wouldn't pick this song for the radio. Here's why I wouldn't pick this song for a movie or a TV show place. So you can hear what you need to do to get better. It's helped me focus and change my mindset of what it is to be an artist. The Billboard 500 Club is amazing and it's been for me, a total game changer. It's like having a, a jigsaw puzzle and some of the pieces were, they've been lost and then it, someone comes along and gives you the jigsaw pieces. Slot it in, you see the big picture and you can, you can run with it then. If any of you can take any sort of course that he offers, I would do it in a heartbeat. It will be some of the best invested money. Just nine months after joining the club, I got my first contracts with a sync licensing company in Los Angeles, and that company is now pitching my songs for TV and film. Jamil, how was that? I, go ahead and put it in your microphone, brother. My fault. I didn't even notice it was off. Um, that was great. Um, we were saying how we felt that should be on a reality television show. Um, we were talking about uh, we were talking about education and how you know we need to be able to educate our children so that our children educate their children. Um, just because you know, like a lot of people, I, I was watching this reality television show and um, 
this woman ended up like marrying a 20 year old and she was basically like well I don't understand why you can't do these things and it was like you're not thinking several different steps ahead and I think if we had a different type of education system where we're not just teaching our children just these facts and like the rote system of how to go about you know in, input information export information um then it's like well you can think two steps ahead you can think three steps ahead you can meditate you can be more self-aware so just it was great i enjoyed it that's all because we talked about education too so i think that's awesome that even not being in the same groups you know like somehow we're thinking on that level which means it's something that probably the world should be thinking of which most of them are not i mean i i think in my school i don't know if it happened in y'all's but like they took out Right after I left school, I think my cousin was going to the same high school. They took out music and they took out uh, sport. They took out gym. And so I was like, wait, the things that actually output your energy, which is usually running around, playing, and then music, they were moved. So they're basically keeping you in a little box that whole time to conform you into being a slave that does jobs that you probably don't want to work. And then they throw you onto the world with no business education you don't understand how taxes or accounting work or credit cards. And they're like, and most of us are not, not everyone, but some people are already addicted to sugars and all kinds of stuff. And they don't even know it. So they're just running around like crazy people with other crazy people in bars getting drunk. Like that to me is kind of what happens. And then it becomes a thing like, let's go out and do this because we're so used to it. That's cool that you guys said, okay, let me, uh, that's awesome. I appreciate it. Let's see, um, Caitlin, what did y'all talk about or anything that stuck out in your group? Um, I actually just hopped in, so I missed Oh, you did? Yeah. All good. Then I'll hop over to Bear. Hi, guys. My construct I want to completely obliterate is mental health and the cool. stigma around mental health and... Uh, getting women off birth control because it also controls your mind. <laughs> ah. Okay, so when you say, uh, break it down for me. When you said uh, the the construct of mental health, what what construct, how, how is it? Show, give me some advice. Give me some examples. So it, it's all, like, we, me and Yudi were like, heck yeah, we were, I'm not going to steal hers, but it yeah. definitely ties into, it ties into what Yudi did, and um, the construct of that you're not a full person, you're not a complete person if you're not happy, if you're not doing what you need to be doing, and the stigma around really reaching out to people when you need help. Um, like, for instance, I mean, I was always super into dr dreams, like, I'm a very active dreamer, I'm able to control my dreams, I do healing in my dreams. Um, I st had stopped, like, I forgot to take my birth control for, like, a week, and I started dreaming again, started taking it again, and the dreams ran away and I was like well screw this throughout all my birth control I mean I haven't been taking it since the beginning of the year and I'm dreaming every single night now I've it's controlling it's, it's controlling. a controlling it's like it wasn't just controlling my uterus it was controlling my, my mind and so it, just even in this past two and a half Ooh. months alone now I'm doing all the stuff I need I'm do, like I, I'm dancing in my dance studio upstairs I'm taking ballet like when I was in New York I wasn't going to ballet class like and now I'm doing ballet by myself here. Um, it's just uh, like that's so it's, interesting. It's, yes, it's it's been a long road. I, I hate saying long road to get here or whatever. Uh, but I can see that I'm already better than where I was at the beginning of the year. Wow. What's well, also interesting when you're saying the dream part. So there's a part of our pineal gland that comes awake when we're dreaming, and that it's mm -hmm. uh, it helps us to to also create and imagine and when you're saying you took the you stopped taking the birth control i wonder if part of it was affecting that gland and then when you removed it that gland started to experience creativity and that's when you started doing dancing and you started doing ballet and it, it almost like opened back up the expression of what was already supposed to be happening and if anything i'm saying i'm glad you figured it out now yeah because yeah. That means you will be able to fully express yourself better, but then more importantly, the energy you create will be fully expressed. And then when you do have kids, you'll be able to show them that as well. So it keeps that energetic flow going. So that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, cool. Uh, Grant, what you got? So we talked a little bit about education, uh, how the system is trying to remove like critical thinking uh, from us. And uh, we also talked about like social media 
how basically it's like it's it's showing us it's i'm trying to think of the right words um it's trying to tell us like how to be um it wants us to appear a certain way um and like be a version of ourselves that isn't authentic or true um i also think we also talked about how social media it, it it's basically teaching us to like almost be like be dumb you know like it's removing um some functioning from our our brains you know from like our everyday lives that like you know removing like different parts of our thinking like the creativity aspect of our minds um that's awesome, yeah man. that's pretty much I mean, it what's so cool is while you're saying this i'm watching everyone's faces and everyone's like yep like Whenever you start seeing this, we are all around the world, right? We got people in Sweden, South Africa, Canada, Costa Rica, you know, America, and everyone's going, uh-huh, uh-huh. Here's the scary thing. Not everyone is having conversations like this. So there's a whole world of billions of people right now who are locked in, who are in it, who are zoned in. They're getting all their, it's so funny when people say, oh, did you see what's on the feed? I'm like, do you realize the word feed? It's what they're feeding you. It's in the word. It's what they're feeding you. And you're eating it. Like, it's kind of like when they, when, when they used to do like pigs in a trough, they just throw the food in there and all the pigs come, they all eat it. That's what's happened. They're feeding this stuff. And so it's interesting that you're, we're all saying this education, social media, how they're controlling brains. And we're not conspiracy people. We're just opening our eyes and going, wait a second. Hmm. We should probably look at this thing a little deeper. We're not scientists. We don't have graphs behind us. No one here is like, look, I've been doing diagrams. Let me show you. We're just people who are consciously looking at things. Imagine if we can open up the minds of the rest of the world in some way. Because I think all of us can see if we keep going down this direction, poor education, more social medias, like really, like you said, taking away the creative side of your brain because now people are trying to do things in a certain box. Well, I got to post it this time. I got to say this hashtag. I got to write... You know, this is what, to me, I'm amazed behind people have pictures at the beach. It's like everyone lives at the beach now. Everyone lives at the beach. I live at the beach. I haven't taken one picture at the beach. Maybe the one shot of me surfing. But it's like, I'll look at someone's page and we'll have five pictures at the beach. So it's almost like telling everyone how to live a life. But the life is usually designed that's going to sell other people's products. Which that's the weird thing. It's like, if you, if you start to look at the breadcrumbs, I said this the other day, Instagram is by far the best and the biggest pimp that has ever lived. Because it's such a big pimp that people don't even know they're being pimped. That's a level of pimpdom that no one has ever understood before. Like, check this out. Someone is going to go right now and they're going to get a bag of tea and they're gonna turn around and push their ass out in a thong and show you tea. Instagram is gonna make more money than both the tea company and the person who did it. Because Instagram is gonna sell the next person watching it an advertisement. And that advertisement is gonna be worth money. And everyone's spending more time on the block than they even realize. That's the biggest pimp that's ever been around. By far, biggest pimp that's ever been around in history. But no one sees it as that. And all I say is look at what a pimp's job is to do. Control the minds of its workers, um, beat them down a bit so they feel like they don't have enough, take more money than they have, and make them think the world that they're in is better than the other ones that people are living. That is pimpdom. That's the, that's the platform. If you don't know how to use it for yourself. If you're in that world, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's the biggest pimp that's ever existed. All right. Uh, Brian, what you got, brother? You're, you're muted, brother. There we go. I was in the group with Grant and uh, mm. we talked a lot about education and uh, we talked about the social media thing and we came to the conclusion that the reason for that is the lack of education 
And you and I have already had this conversation where, you know, they want the powers that be, they want you to be dumb so that they can do this manipulation that they're doing on the social media. It's all part of the game, so. Yeah, it wouldn't work if you were smart. Yeah, it wouldn't work if you were smart. Smart people don't get over, you know, overthrown or no. slave, enslaved. It's like, was, if you, go ahead, brother. Okay, that, I was just gonna say, cause we, we talked exhaustively about that, but then yeah. one more constraint that we had, and that was uh, the one of seeing the good in all the people that you meet before you, before you put a, another label on them. Just, you know, see the good in the people and, instead of being cautious or mm. thinking that. I, I know it's a bit naive, but I, I do. I honestly see good in everyone that I meet. I don't, I don't care, you know. You can frown at me or, you know, scowl. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold that against you. you know? Yeah, yeah. That was just. I like yeah. that. I like. It's interesting when you say see the good in people because I think all people are inherently good. Just like I think all animals are inherently good. Like I've never met a puppy that wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met a puppy that you're like that puppy. It's going to be an asshole when he grows up. Like every puppy, you're like, there's a puppy, right? Every kitten, you're like, there's a kitten. What usually happens is the things that puppy went through growing up defined how it reacted to you when it got older, when it's in the shelter. You know, it's the things that that, it's the environment that that puppy had to go through created its reaction or its biting or its these other things. But it wasn't the puppy. I think all people are born inherently good. It's, okay, just last go thing. Ahead. Go ahead. You are what you eat. I agree in that as well, too. I do. Yeah. Like, yeah. I. Hey, listen, I'm so glad that we all are aligning on this because even the fact that we're having this conversation means we're going forward someplace because our group didn't have this conversation last year. And I know that my friends don't all have these. I mean, the friends out here do, but back in the States... We start talking about this stuff and people be like, oh yeah, man, my brain hurts when you talk about this stuff. I'm like, your brain hurts? Oh, because I'm, in I'm inputting information that your brain isn't ready to change yet. That's why it hurts. Because your subconscious is going, oh wait, he was probably right about that. But then you start feeling, if, if he's right, do I have to change this, 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 this? And I don't want to do all that, so it just hurts. I'm like, it makes sense. But here you run into people and the conversation is like this. It's very fluid. It's very open. It's like, oh, what can we do? You know, what, what are the ideas? What are ideas? So awesome. Denise, what did you have? Um, I was, I was in their group too, but <laughs> I also, the one that I mentioned was um, like politics and how mm -hmm. we're like, we have to pick a side of who we're going to vote for, what, t what Democrat, Republican. And um, I just think that's crazy. Uh, also, with like sports is kind of similar like how people just they're born in a state so like they have to like this team but like you should be able to like whatever player you want and I think that's also crazy to me I think that's so good that you brought that up because I've mentioned this before people all right so I have this book I'm working on called the benevolent and the beast and it kind of breaks down how we are benevolent creatures but we're born into the bodies of beasts but no one teaches us how the beast actually works. So we don't know how to ride it, you know? So what happens is if you don't know that you have animalistic properties or traits, you push them away and act like they're bad, which is crazy because they obviously exist. Animals have been around for millions of years. When people are like, you shouldn't think of like that. You shouldn't do that. And you shouldn't blah, 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 blah. And you're going, you start to conform something against what it actually is designed to do. So about the part with, with teams, I always think it's funny because actually I'll do a challenge real quick. Name a business outside of medicine that is not the amplification of something that's already happening in nature. Repeat that, please. Yeah. Uh, name a business outside of medicine that is is not the amplification 
of something that's already happening in everything else in nature. Meaning if you say real estate, I'm going to be like, yeah, every beaver makes a den. If, if like you say, everything has a hornet's nest, has it like, it's all wired. Name something that we as humans do that isn't already in nature outside of medicine. Debate. What is it? Debate. No, animals debate. Yeah, you're right. Dogs are like, rah, 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 rah. what about the entertainment? You know, they be talking shit. <laughs> Wait, what did you say, Andre? I, what about entertainment? I don't see any uh, squirrels setting up a stage and like. Dang. No, no, birds do. <laughs> Bird, birds do. That's what they do. They'll go up and they'll. That's how they mate. They'll be like, woo, woo, and they'll make sounds and they'll do all kinds of stuff and they kind of prance around and they do a little thing. They do a dance. Hey, Peacocks yeah. little phone dances. Hey, right? yeah. They got they got mating <laughs> calls. We got parrots. We got parrots here that come by and they, they start dancing. Well, movies. Movies. The thing they dance. What's well, up? Movies. Oh, well, movies is an extension of entertainment. But I'm saying the actual act of getting attention and then forming it for procreation. Movies are cool, but think about it. Always the leading character has to be the most best looking person on the screen. Mm. It's because they want you to procreate with that person. You yeah. never see the person who's not the best looking as the leading character on that set. Peacocks. Peacocking. Throw out another one, y'all. Allison typed into the chat astronomy. <laughs> Fair enough. Master, Fair enough. Yes. Fair enough. I'll say this. The reason why it's not a business is because other animals don't care. Because they're going, they're going, we're it's all working. And people are like, well, we gotta figure out to the dot of how we think it all works, even though we're not sure. And we're gonna say it's Scorpio, but it's actually Ophiuchin, but we're not gonna change it. And then when da, 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 da. Did anyone see that meme? It's like space hotel coming in like 2035. And then the meme just says, we just want healthcare at the bottom. It's just simple, just simple things. No, I know they're all like, we're going to blast off. And Elon Musk is like, we're going to build this. And you're like, yes, listen, all looks great. All's great. We still have a million people who are abducted a year for just sex trading in America. Let's just stop that. Yeah, we're, we're in like this little greenhouse floating in space and like we were talking about you know things we do for greed and we completely you know, we're, we're gonna have a third of the group uh, of the polar bears in yeah. about about 30 years from now yeah it's crazy a third, a third. It's and crazy. We're, we're it's like as if we have like this backup planet that's just like a hop and a skip away from us as if like no we can't escape this place like we're not escaping earth like not in our generation, so we better figure out how the fuck to make this work. Like we need to wake up to this. And we'll yeah. we'll get off. We'll we'll be able to. By the time we're eighty, we'll be. I've already been able to colonize, start colonizing another place. But I do believe that the other. Um, uh, if we got, we'll spend a whole day where I tell you what I see in my dreams because I've written them down and they're exact and they have dates to them and they have these warnings. Like, ask Amy, it's, I have dreams I wake up and it's like, this is a warning. This is not a question. This is a warning. This must happen by this date. Like, I have some crazy, I see Ashley's just going, yeah. Like, I got some crazy dreams. And y'all know, Andre, you know me long enough, man. It's very rare that I'm wrong. I don't think I've been wrong ever about something like this. I don't know. Um, for a bit, you haven't gotten wrong yet. I'll say that much. So, um, yeah, it's weird. But anyway, um, the thing about the animal part that I'm asking you, though, is what's interesting about the teams that Denise was talking about is then we always name the teams based on the animals. It's all connected. We're like falcons, uh, freaking eagles, uh, you know, jaguars, and jungle cats, and bears. And it, it, we're just naming things that we see. Like no one just created a new name. We're just renaming things that we know that are already in Animal Planet. So it just shows how connected we are to it that we can't even name a team other than naming an animal. All right, cool. All right, y'all. Um, so I just want to say, I think today was a really good uh, uh, Monday motivation. And hopefully for everyone that got a chance to spend some time here today, it's great seeing some new faces here today is we're going to keep doing this stuff. We're going to keep breaking into breakout groups. I really like the chance of all of us to get connect. And it's, it's fun for me too. Um, 
And then for anyone who's in the mentorship course, if you're in the mentorship course, raise your hand if you're in it. Is anyone here in it? Cool. So I just want to tell you, because I've made a video to it, but I just want to let you know, everyone's mentorship class, I'm really, really proud of everyone because it's, we don't have this in the rest of the group. Most of the time when people in the group collaborate, it's because of a competition, a contest, or I don't know, we're, we're doing something that's collaborative. But the people who are in the mentorship course are collaborating a lot. And I'm literally getting to see people jump every week. Like they're, so Denise is shaking her head, yes. We're seeing people go from like one week to the next week better, 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 because we're actually giving assignments and people are working on them together. And you're seeing people grow immensely. Like the songs that people played last week, every song was like on the radio, on a soundtrack. It was at a whole nother level than, than I've seen. So I'm seeing like an accelerated growth. So I just want to know anyone who was in the mentorship course, like awesome job, because this is a growth rate by the end of the year it's gonna, you're all gonna be different beasts. Like it's a whole different thing. And I know Reese played some songs that were crazy. Um, everyone who played a song last week had a song that when they finish it, like Brenda's song that could be on the radio or could be on the soundtrack or something. So anyway, I just wanted you all to know if you're in here, if I saw you to let you know that it's kind of crazy to see the amount of growth that's only happened in three months. And by the end of the year, it's gonna be wild. Um, all right. so. I'm gonna hop off. I gotta be with Aubrey to do a, a new member to interview the person. Um, but I'm excited for everyone when you get your Unity release things. I saw Yolanda's, um, or I saw Yolanda talking to Cobra. That was really impactful. Uh, I'm seeing you shaking your head yes, so you felt it as well. Like I almost had a tear when I watched him sit back in his chair and kind of like have that moment and kind of ingest all of this. So for, if you haven't gotten your unit release information yet, I'm excited for when you do. Hopefully it'll be as impactful as it's all been for all of us. And uh, like I said, we have a guy coming in for the Fork in the Road project. What I'm going to try and hopefully do is get more of these people from this company to parlay to invest in some of the products that we have for unit releases. So I can say like, here's an artist who wants to stand for something. Can we take some of the budget towards a nonprofit? So my goal now, I'm just giving you all a heads up is the idea for the studio out here, I might turn it into a nonprofit. And there's a reason for that. I don't really want to run a retreat center for people all year round. But what I want to do is change the vibration of artists to help them to record music. And if I made that a nonprofit, people could donate. And then also we can pick artists that we want to put it into. And then also people can use it as write-offs. So that way, if you say, I want to do an album and you have an investor, they can write this off and say, well, I'm putting this towards a charity which works way better for artists, which has never been done before. So it's like another layer of going, how do we help each other? How do we beat the system? And how do we not become a thing where it's like customer service all day long because you know now it's a retreat center. And I, I ran the idea a couple of investors, they all loved it. And they were like, oh, Adam, people can write this off. You could also get major producers to come and produce people for, and they can write off their time there. So you're like, you can get a, a Grammy award winning producer to come out for two weeks and they can actually write it all off because they're working for a charity. And I was like, oh, so that's how we can get them to do that so that the artists don't have to pay for the big producers and they can actually come together. So this is where things are going. Um, and so far, everyone I've talked to, yeah, exactly, John Mark, that's what I did. When I came up with the idea, I was like, oh, wait a second, there's a hack in this thing. Um, so, so far, everyone I've talked to, the investors I've talked to have been really excited about it and they, they're like, this is a good idea. Um, and so we're going to see. So anyway, I know some people are thinking about coming out to Costa Rica in July. I, I saw, I saw. Um, we're July. talking about doing a songwriting camp in July yeah. in uh, Costa Rica. And we're going to be, I think probably because there are some people who are not level threes that we would consider mm, to, okay, cool. uh, how to come. So we're going to post about that in the group later. Cool. Yeah. Today, for sure. All right, awesome. So for everyone, um, they were here the other day when Andre Yudi talked about coming to Costa Rica, and the next thing you know, Sam hit me up and was like, "I'm coming too." And then, like, so I'm getting these text John, messages. John, message. John, John, Mark was like, "I'm coming too." I was like, "Oh wow, it's turning into a whole thing." Get a rise in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, that's awesome. Uh, for anyone who does come out, I, I think that's gonna be a great time, and hopefully, uh, we can get a. I, I told Andre, I was like, "What would be cool is we can hire a local videographer." to like yeah. come in the rooms, come in the studios, video it, and then make a nice little video for us. And it'll be one of our meetups like we had 
before the COVID when we all went to LA and that was such a good time. Um, all right, cool. That being said, I'll see everyone in the group this week. Uh, and then, oh, we have the competition, the contest. I started getting all the songs. I haven't listened through all of them yet, but so far the first couple I did listen to sounded really good. So uh, that's gonna be really interesting to sit down with that. Remember, I do none of the judging for this because it's too hard. So I'm saying it up to the mentors, the executives who've been doing this and they can chop through it, but I'm excited because remember, I think it's like $2,500 or 2,500 total. It's like $2,000, top three, $500 in gifts. Um, and so just realize my goal is by the end of this, when we get our 500 to have like $10,000 prizes for everyone in the group. So you can like get money and put it right into your career. That's the goal, but we only get there once we get more members. So if you have friends, you have people you think are talented, just tell them about the group because one person might come in, one person might come in, but at the end it's, a, it's supposed to be like its own ecosystem where it basically just kind of like pays itself and itself. And I know there's some people in the group who've already, who already make like 10 times the amount they pay in the club on the side, like uh, Belinda and Sean, they get hired from people in the group. So they might pay for their membership fee, but they're making money from being hired. Um, so just know that this thing kind of comes around once you start to get to that certain level to where people are hiring you, because I'm seeing it in the people that call me. All right. Uh, also, that, shout out, uh, critique Sunday, John Mark. Yes. Yes. Be there. Be there. Be there. Be square. It's a place to be. That's what I was going to say that. <laughs> if you got friends, if you got friends who have demo critiques too, invite them for that day. So that way, um, let's try to pack the demo critiques. And then tomorrow I'm doing my first Q and A. That's why I got these, these cool lights over here. Um, I'm doing the first uh, like YouTube Q and A. So um, if you have any questions, if you have friends who have questions about the music industry, Denise will post about it. And then we'll do it uh, to where it's like a live Zoom like this. And I'll be helping anyone has questions and stuff like that, like consultation style. So one question, two questions, 10 questions, bring them on and we'll be there tomorrow night doing that. Cool. All right, everyone. I will see you soon. Take care. Why are all the talented upcoming producers, songwriters, and artists, even executives, talking about the Billboard 500 Club? The Billboard 500 Club is just what I needed. As a graduate of Berkeley College of Music, for the last three years, I've learned more and grown more as a musician and a producer and an artist in three months than I had in the last three years. from the people in the industry. So they're saying, here's why I wouldn't pick this song for the radio. Here's why I wouldn't pick this song for a movie or a TV show place. So you can hear what you need to do to get better. It's helped me focus and change my mindset of what it is to be an artist. The Billboard 500 Club is amazing. And it's been, for me, a total game changer. It's like having a, a jigsaw puzzle and some of the pieces where they've been lost and then it, someone comes along and gives you the jigsaw pieces. Slot it in, you see the big picture and you can, you can run with it then. If any of you can take any sort of course that he offers, I would do it in a heartbeat. It will be some of the best invested money. Just nine months after joining the club, I got my first contracts with a sync licensing company in Los Angeles, and that company is now pitching my songs for TV and film.